Today we're going to be talking about how to evaluate an indefinite integral as a power series and how to find the associated radius of convergence. And in this particular problem, we've been given the integral of t divided by the quantity 1 minus t to the 8th power, and we've been asked to evaluate that integral as a power series and then find the radius of convergence of that associated power series. The first thing we need to do in order to find this integral as a power series is to find a power series representation of our function t divided by 1 minus t to the 8th. The way that we're going to do that is by comparing it to this well-known power series, which is the infinite sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n power. We know that this infinite sum is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus x. And 1 divided by 1 minus x looks pretty similar to our original function. There's just a couple of differences. One thing we can do to make our function more similar to this well-known power series is to factor out t from the numerator. So when we do that, if we just look at this function here, t divided by 1 minus t to the 8th, and we ignore the integral and, and the dt for a second, if we just look at that, we can factor out a t from the numerator, and what we're left with is t times 1 over 1 minus t to the 8th power. Now what we have without this t in front looks even more similar to 1 over 1 minus x. The only difference here is that the value here of x compared to our function, the value of x here is actually t to the 8th power right here, and we have this t multiplied out in front. Well, those are easy substitutions that we can make. What we can say then is that our power series representation here is just going to be the infinite sum from n equals 0 to infinity, like this, of x to the n power. Well, here they say they get x to the n power, they get this x from this x value right here. So all we need to do is substitute t to the 8th and raise that to the n power. So we'll get t to the 8th raised to the n power like that. Now this is exactly the same as our well-known power series. The only thing we can't forget is that we need to pull this t out in front here and make sure that we include it. So we put the t out in front like that. That's how we use this comparison with the well-known power series to get a power series representation of our function. Now we just need to simplify this value. So what we're going to get here, we need to realize that we have out in front t to the first power. This t to the 8th raised to the n power is going to become t to the 8n, because when you have an exponent raised to another exponent like that, you multiply them together. So we have t to the 8n. Well, now we have two things multiplied together that have like bases, right? They both have a base of t, t to the first power, and t to the 8n power. When we have that situation, we can combine the two terms and add the exponents together. So now our power series representation becomes the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of t to the 8n plus 1 power. We just added them together, 8n plus 1. This is our power series representation of our original function t divided by 1 minus t to the 8th. Now to find the value of the integral here as a power series, what we're going to do is we're going to say the integral of t over 1 minus t to the 8th dt. Well, if we found a power series representation which represents this function exactly, they're equal to one another, these two things are equal to one another, then the integral of this function here should be equal to the integral of our power series representation. So the integral of the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of t raised to the 8n plus 1 dt. T. Since these two functions are equal to one another, the integral of the two of them should be equal to one another. So all we need to do is integrate the right-hand side over here. The value that we get on the right-hand side we know will represent here the integral of our original function t over 1 minus t to the 8th. So we're going to be working on integrating the right-hand side. What we want to do now is replace this value here. We have this sum here from n equals 0 to infinity of this series here, we want to replace that with terms of the series. This is our infinite series, we want to replace it with its terms. So what we're going to say is the integral, and instead of this infinite sum here, we're going to expand the sum and give terms instead. We're going to start with n equals 0 here, obviously we plug 0 in for n. 8 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1, so we get t to the first power. 
Then we're gonna add to that what we get when we plug in n equals one. So we get eight times one is eight, plus one is nine, so we get t to the ninth. Then we add to that what we get when we plug in n equals two. So eight times two is 16, plus one is 17, t to the 17. And you can see that if we do one more term here with n equals four, we'll get 32 plus one is 33, we'll get t to the 33. And we could keep adding terms like this, we'll say plus, dot, 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 until the last term in our series, which would be the a sub nth term, which we know is what we have in our original sum here, t to the 8n plus 1. And now we're just going to use this sequence of terms here to represent our infinite sum instead of the summation notation that we had up here. Now, taking the integral, we just really take the integral one term at a time using power rule. We add one to the exponent, so t to the first here becomes t squared, but then we have to divide by our new exponent, so we divide by two, the new exponent is two. t to the ninth becomes t to the tenth over 10. t to the 17th becomes t to the 18 over 18 and t to the 33 becomes t to the 34 over 34, and we can say plus, dot, 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 plus, and t to the 8n plus 1. Remember, when we integrate, we just add 1 to the exponent, so when we add 1 to 8n plus 1, we get 8n plus 2. Dividing by our new exponent, we say divided by 8n plus 2, and then we just have to add c to account for our constant of integration. All we really need now are these two terms right here, the a sub nth term and the value c, the constant of integration. Those two are going to represent the infinite sum of this series right here. If we collapse this into summation notation, what we get is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of t to the 8n plus 2 divided by 8n plus 2 plus c. This infinite sum right here represents the integral of t divided by 1 minus t to the 8th. So if we found the integral of this function here as we normally would just using common integration techniques, we would get some value. And then if we tried to represent that value as an infinite sum, this is what we would get. So this value here that we got is the integral of this function right here. It's just represented in summation notation as a series instead of how we would normally represent it if we just took the integral normally instead of using power series. So that's the representation there of the value of the integral. All we need to do now is find the associated radius of convergence. So to find the radius of convergence, we're going to use this series here, the t to the 8n plus 1, this power series representation. We're not using the one we found because because remember, this is the integral of this original function, and we're looking for the radius of convergence of our original function, not the radius of convergence of the value of the integral. So in order to find the radius of convergence of our original power series, what we're going to do is use the ratio test, which is one of the easiest ways to find radius of convergence. The ratio test says that L is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1, a sub n plus 1, divided by a sub n. What we know is that if we find the value here of this right-hand side, if the value of this right-hand side, or the value of L, essentially, is less than 1, then the series converges. So all we have to do is find a value here for the right-hand side, set it less than 1, and we'll be able to use that to find the radius of convergence. So to find a sub n plus 1 and a sub n, all we do here is we say L is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value. a sub n plus 1, all we do is plug n plus 1 in here for n. So this exponent now is going to become 8 times n plus 1 plus 1. We just plug n plus 1 in everywhere where we have an n. This is the only place we have an n, so that's where we're plugging it in. But our result here is 8n plus 8 plus 1, or 8n plus 9. So a sub n plus 1 is t to the 8n plus 9. We divide that by a sub n, which is just our original representation here, which is t to the 8n plus 1, like this. Now we're going to simplify. Remember that when we have like bases in both our numerator and denominator, right, we have like bases 
both these terms here in the numerator and denominator have a base of t with just different exponents like this. When we have this situation, we subtract the exponent in the denominator from the exponent in the numerator. Well, 8n plus 9 minus 8n plus 1, like this, we're going to get 8n plus 9 minus 8n minus 1. When we distribute that negative sign, our 8n's will cancel, and we just have 9 minus 1, which is 8. So the value there is 8. This is therefore going to become L is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of just t to the 8 power. So t to the 8th, like that. Now if we try to take the limit as n goes to infinity of t to the 8th, it really has no effect because there's no n value, there's no n variable left here in our function. We just have t. We just have t to the 8th. There's no n value involved. So taking the limit as n goes to infinity has no effect. And really, we're just going to say that the limit is equal to the absolute value of t to the 8th, like this. Well, t to the 8th, because we have an even exponent here, it doesn't matter what the value of t is, whether it's positive or negative. Raising it to the 8th power, since we have an even exponent, is always going to make t to the 8th positive. So we can lose the absolute value brackets, and we can say l is equal to t to the 8th power. There's our value of l. All we need to do now is take our value of l and set it less than 1. So we say t to the 8th less than 1 is where our series will converge. All we need to do now is solve this for t. The way we're going to do that is by raising both sides of this inequality to the 1 8th power. We'll raise both sides to the 1 8th power. And what we get then is t to the 8th raised to the 1 8th. We multiply those exponents and we get t to the 1st. So we get t less than 1 raised to the 1 8th is still just 1. It can't be a negative 1 if we take the 8th root of 1. We can't have a negative value because, again, we're talking about an even exponent. So we just get t less than 1. And once we have this in this form, what we can say is that the radius of convergence is whatever's over here on the right-hand side. So the radius of convergence is equal to 1. We'll say r equals 1 to represent the radius of convergence. And that's it. That's how you use power series to evaluate an indefinite integral and find the associated radius of convergence for the original power series representation.